exclusive contracted novel by Felu Novel Network. The Beast Group of the Navigation World This is a story about a pirate world where the Beast Group is the family This is a complete storyline story that Jaime wants to see what's good about being the Pirate King. Family is the treasure of this world. A person's dream will not end. One Piece is a real existence. Thief haha, haha, haha Felu Novel Network reminds you that this novel and its characters are purely fictional. If there are any similarities, they are purely coincidental and should not be imitated. Chapter 1 Woka Kingdom You are listening at NovelFull.audio The Great Voyage of the Kingdom of Maz in the year 1476 of the Gregorian Calendar, Kill Me. Hit these invaders. Go ahead. Hurry up and make up for it. Don't let these intruders rush in. Hold on. You must hold on. These bastards of the Woka Kingdom. War. This is the first half of the Great Voyage, the Kingdom of Maz. A war is taking place in the prosperous Kingdom of Maz. The National Aggression War initiated by the Kingdom of Woka. Woka Kingdom. One of the world's government member countries. The first half of the Great Route is one of the few super military powers. As a member country of the world government, one can enjoy three benefits. 1. More than 80% of the world is in the ocean, and to land in a country, one must rely on sailing boats to walk on the sea. Once a country experiences foreign aggression, it can request the navy under the world government to seek help and use the power of the navy to suppress these foreign invaders. Secondly, when there is an internal conflict in the country that cannot be resolved by one's own abilities. In order to maintain the rulers who are loyal to the world government, they can request the army under the world government to seek help and use the power of the army to suppress domestic rebellions. This is an unparalleled temptation for any ruler of a country. Thirdly, every four years, organized by the world government. All kings of the world's government member states can gather at the center of the world on the Red Earth continent. The holy land of Marjoya, and discuss the future of this ocean with other kings. Their opinions or suggestions can be put forward by a show of hands and voted on by all kings. Once two dot thirds of the kings agree, this plan can be implemented on a global scale. As a price, a high amount of tribute is required to be paid to the world government every year, named, Heavenly Gold. Heavenly Gold is not something that any country can gather and turn in. A normal country cannot make it together. Moreover, it needs to be paid every year. All countries that can gather, Heavenly Gold have extraordinary presence in a certain field. If they cannot gather the, Heavenly Gold, they will be kicked out of the franchise team by the world government and replaced by ordinary countries. Without the protection of the world government, foreign invaders and internal rebels emerge one after another, all of which threaten the rulers. As one of the few military powers with super military power in the first half of the Great Route, the Kingdom of Woka used to gather heavenly gold by selling weapons to non-world government member countries, provoking various wars, and obtaining violence from them. With the continuous mining, the arms business of the Kingdom of Woka has been declining year by year, and when it was almost unable to solve the problem of heavenly gold, King Woka II of the Kingdom of Woka came up with a very good method to immediately solve this problem. This is launching a war. As a military power, the invasion of the Kingdom of Woka was nothing but a reduction in dimensionality, and various countries were engulfed in the flames of war. Radiating from the Kingdom of Woka to the surrounding areas, any country or village near the Kingdom of Woka is plundered and taken away with anything of value. It's even more terrifying than a pirate. This is a military with unified training. A military conscripted for war. You bastards of the Woka Kingdom. How could you reach out to the Ma's Kingdom? This is not the place where you can continue to be arrogant. A man dressed in golden battle armor, shining like a lamp in the dark, appeared behind the army of the Kingdom of Moors. A group of silver-armored soldiers surrounded it and protected it in the center, like stars arched over the moon. It's His Royal Highness, Prince Morse III. Great, 
His Royal Highness Prince Morse III is one of the few strong men in this sea. It is precisely because His Royal Highness Prince Muse III is present that no pirate dares to invade our country, and all chambers of commerce are willing to do business in the Kingdom of Muse. Right, 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 long live Your Highness Prince Morse III. You invaders, Your Highness Prince Morse III is here. You must die. Seeing the arrival of King Morse III, the morale of the soldiers of the Morse army greatly increased. The originally shaky front, which was almost unable to withstand the invasion of the Woka Kingdom, sounded the horn of counterattack. Captain. It's Mosey III. He is indeed still in this country. Behind the Woka Kingdom Legion, a soldier is reporting to a man wearing black armor. Calm down. What are you afraid of? Our kingdom of Woka has always been very close to the kingdom of Maz. We have been wary of the military strength of the kingdom of Maz for years, and we are also wary of this man. Maz III. He is indeed powerful, and even I dare not say that I can definitely defeat him. But what does it matter? The reason why we dare to launch a war is because we have monsters here. Go. Pass on my orders. Call the Aizen Joro brothers over and let them help us deal with Mosey III and his guards. Mosey III is very famous in this sea. As the saying goes, the legs of Wushu Shuren soldiers, who were originally trembling, seem to have received God's blessing upon hearing the names of the Aizen Joro brothers. My waist is straight, and my legs are no longer shaking. Yes. Captain. I will follow your arrangements. After speaking, the Woka soldier turned his head and walked towards the largest military camp in the rear of the army. In the military camp, two individuals with horns on their heads were as if from hell. They were four or five meters tall, with their upper bodies bare and their lower bodies wearing leather pants. They were tied with purple string around their waists. The two of them look very similar. Do you want to say the difference? The slightly larger one has longer hair and carries a huge broadsword on its back. The smaller one is carrying a huge wolf tooth stick on his back. The two of them seem to have not seen anyone coming, eating large chunks of beef in their hands and drinking the wine from the oversized wine bowl, as if they were reincarnated from hunger. The man, who was nearly five meters tall and carrying a huge broadsword, said to the equally huge man after finishing the wine in the bowl. Thief ha ha ha, Kai Duo, we're going to fight again. Oh, hello 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 hello, Brother Karagao, my hands are itching. The soldier looked at the two people who looked like demons and swallowed the saliva in their throats. My older brother Aizen Joro Karagar, who was only eleven years old and had a height of five meters, was immeasurable in strength. Legend has it that apart from his younger brother, only dead people have ever seen Karagar take action. My younger brother Aizen Joro Kaido, who is also only 10 years old, has grown to 4.3 meters tall and has few opponents with his wolf tooth club in his hand. Anyway, this soldier has never seen anyone who can withstand Kido's wolf tooth stick. Soldiers witnessed with their own eyes that during a return voyage, a fleet loaded with gold was discovered by pirates, and three pirate groups besieged the Woka Kingdom fleet. Countless pirates raised their machetes and spears, and when they hit Kaido, they couldn't even break his skin. Kaido was leisurely playing like a golf ball, hammering a person's head with a stick. This. It's a real monster. Chapter 2. Aizen Joro Brothers. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Is your hand itching? Then you'll be the enemy this time. My Ododo. Cut, wasn't it me who dealt with all the enemies that time? Even though Brother Karagara's strength is so strong, he always lazily lets me take action. Oh, hello, 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 but it doesn't matter. I also like the feeling of smashing people one by one with a stick, like hitting a mole. So, little devil. Where are the enemies? Kai Duo looked at the Woka soldiers standing at the door and shouted arrogantly. Although the soldiers themselves have developed well, despite being only ten years old at a height of two meters, it is clear that Kaido is the little ghost. But soldiers dare not speak up. 
please come with me, two adults. The commander of the army is waiting for you. Gollum Gollum Gollum, after finishing the last bit of wine, Karagar stood up and stretched lazily. Let's go, Kaido. A new war is coming. Great. This time I'm going to smash 1,000 people to death. Oh number 2,000 people. The two brothers followed the soldiers out of the military camp. In the year 1471 according to the Haiyuan calendar five years ago, a Chinese man named Li Xiaobao inexplicably traveled to this world. As a former Haimi, Li Xiaobao recognized the sleeping man beside him at a glance. Captain of the Fourth Emperor Pirates. Governor General of Huji Kingdom. The most powerful man in the world. Beast Kai Duo. And I actually became Kido's brother. Its name is. Karagar. Aizen Joro was initiated by himself. I don't have a surname with Kaido. From the moment I remember, I wandered around the remote coastline of the kingdom of Woka with my childhood friend Kaido. Li Xiaobao didn't want to forget the memories of his past life. In order to motivate himself, he gave himself and Kai an extra surname. I originally intended to take Li as my surname, but it seems that for the pirate world, the Li surname is quite strange. So Li Xiaobao simply used the surname Aizen Joro from the previous imperial family as his and Kaido's surnames. Even if you have traveled through time, you must not forget your identity as a traveler, and the memories of your past life must be preserved. Like many travelers, Karagar strives to find his own golden finger, as a seasoned Jaime, Karagar knows he has an unparalleled huge advantage. A monster-level body like Kaido. And I know the complete timeline of the world of pirates myself. Karagar has watched the original plot, fan hours, and manga of the pirates countless times. Deeply aware of the secrets of this world. It's just that I've traveled too early and the plot hasn't started yet. The world betrayal that one can catch up with is the legendary Valley of Gods battle initiated by the Lox pirates. Although Lox is bound to be defeated and die, Karagar wants to see how strong the world's top fighters are. Moreover, Karagar has his own plan. If I remember correctly, in the year 1478 of the Gregorian calendar, the world government would notice the potential of Kaido and communicate with the king of the kingdom of Woka. At the cost of several years of exemption from payment of heavenly gold, in exchange for Kaido's service to the world government. That is to say, there are still a few years left for Karagar to develop in this world with peace of mind. As long as he does not deliberately avoid it, does not affect the timeline of the world, and does not allow the butterfly effect to be too great, Karagar is confident that he will become the master of this pirate world. After a year of crossing, in the year 1472 of the Gregorian calendar, Karagar also awakened his unique golden finger. The system. But the words of the system are still remembered to this day. Congratulations to the host, successfully binding through the system. Due to a lack of energy, the system is about to shut down. There will be no more news from now on. Energy, what else can energy have in the world of pirates? You can tell with your butt. Like countless fellow pirates, energy must be the fruit of demons. In order to awaken the system, Karagar trains himself day and night, so that one day he will encounter the devil's fruit and have the ability to seize it. But fate did not meet people's wishes. For years have passed, and Karagar has never encountered the devil's fruit. Even those with devil fruit abilities have never encountered one. This actually makes Karagar very depressed. In the year 1475 of the Haiyuan calendar, which was one year ago, Karagar met that man while practicing with Kaido by the seaside. Woka II The current king of the kingdom of Woka Woka II who was worried about the heavenly gold, borrowed money and ran into obstacles everywhere. Just as he returned to his country and passed through a wilderness coastline, he met Karagar and Kido, who were sparring. Every collision between eleven-year-old Karagal and nine-year-old Kido shook the earth and mountains. Although Karagar had been suppressing Kido due to his age and size, 
Woka too had already recognized their uniqueness. Having witnessed the power of Karagar and Kido monsters, Woka too figured it out. Why do I borrow from everywhere? If you don't have money, go grab it. If you have these two monster-like men, how can you lose? For this reason, Woka too made a promise of two demon fruits per year. As long as Karagar and Kido join the army of the Woka kingdom, they can receive two devil fruits. Whether it's for personal consumption or for sale, Woka too doesn't care at all. But the ability of these demon fruits cannot be guaranteed by Woka too, after all, it is already very rare to obtain them. However, Karagar doesn't mind, it's feeding the system anyway, and any ability doesn't matter. Now the new year is approaching. As long as this last war is fought, there should be no more wars before the new year. And I will receive the two demon fruits promised by Woka too and the key to unlock the system. Oh, hello, hello, Captain Gaka, it seems that you have encountered trouble again. Karagar and Kido followed the Woka soldiers to the front of the army. Kai Duo greeted warmly. I have to trouble you two brothers again. I didn't expect the bones of the Kingdom of Maz to be so hard in this war. Watching below, with the arrival of Prince Morse III, the morale of the Morse soldiers was boosted, and they even sounded the horn of counterattack. Guy's face turned black as he paused. Excuse me. Kaido, we need the power of your eyes in Joro brothers now. It doesn't matter, Captain Gaga. This was originally a deal between us and Woka too, let's leave it to us. Let's go, Kido, let them see the power of eyes in Joro. On the battlefield, soldiers from both sides fought against each other. The sound of weapons colliding and people shouting echoed throughout the entire battlefield. Chapter 3 This is the monster. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Ah! Monsters! Ah 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 ah! A frightened shout echoed through the battlefield. Everyone stopped and engaged in the ongoing battle. Look in the direction of the sound source. On the edge of the battlefield, on an open field. A mosey warrior threw down his steel sword and collapsed on the ground. The whole person trembled incessantly, looking ahead in great fear. Everyone followed the gaze of the mosey soldier, and the entire scene stunned everyone. On the empty ground, a circle of corpses fell to the ground. The armor on the corpse had already been stained red with fresh blood. People can only tell from the style of the armor that these people are warriors from Maz. In the center of the fallen Mosey soldiers in this circle, a man nearly five meters tall stood in the center of the crowd. The man had two horns on his head, like a demon god, blood-red eyes, and hair extending from his head to his back like a hedgehog. This all appears to be a man's madness. Wearing a huge broad sword on his back makes people respect and distance themselves. Behind the man stood a man who was over four meters tall and equally enormous on his side. The man carried a huge wolf tooth stick on his right shoulder in his right hand. The tip of the wolf tooth stick had been stained red with blood, and blood was continuously dripping down from the tip of the stick onto the ground. The man's left hand was lifted on his chest, holding the head of a Morse soldier in his hand. One minute ago. Originally in a good battle, two monsters suddenly fell from the sky. The man with a wolf tooth club smashed one by one at the Morse soldiers who were still fighting on the ground. The captain of the Morse army saw his subordinates being smashed into meat sauce by men one by one, and finally mustered the courage to pick up a steel sword and charge towards the man. Nail the steel sword looks like it's chopping steel on a man. Captain Maz, who was stunned, was grabbed by Kaido and twisted his head. Watching the Mosey warrior struggling with his neck in his hand, Kaido smiled and said. Oh, hello, hello, is this the power of the widely rumored military power, Maz Kingdom, dot? It's really disappointing. After speaking, Kaido pinched his finger and the head of the Morse soldier was instantly crushed. Blood-red brain plasma floats everywhere. The body lost its head and fell from the air. This how else are we going to fight? 
This is clearly a monster that should not exist in the world this. This is the Aizen Joro brothers. The Aizen Joro brothers have arrived on the front battlefield. The Woka soldier shouted excitedly. The arrival of the Aizen Joro brothers signifies the end of the war. Quickly, all the Woka soldiers withdrew from the rear. As long as the Aizen Joro brothers join the war, everyone is allowed to retreat. All opponents will be handed over to the Aizen Joro brothers to solve. This is the words of King Woka too before each departure. How can we train soldiers if we can't just let the Aizen Joro brothers come up? Woka too knew about his trade with the Aizen Joro brothers. Cooperation is only temporary, sooner or later the Aizen Joro brotherhood will leave the kingdom of Woka. Now that the Aizen Joro brothers are here, they can train without losing and plan for the future. Seeing Kaido crush the head of the Mozi warrior, Prince Mozi III felt a chill in his heart in the distance. Coming. The war weapon that the kingdom of Woka is proud of. Recently, there has been a legend circulating on the sea that it is unknown where His Majesty King Woka II found two brothers who were like hellish gods. With these two monsters, the kingdom of Woka continuously launched wars against neighboring countries. With the military strength of the kingdom of Moors, there is no need to rely on the protection of the world government. Not becoming a member of the world government can save a large amount of heavenly gold expenses to improve public relations and strengthen military strength. It's impossible for ordinary pirates to attack the kingdom of Moors. Don't be fooled by the wealth of the kingdom of Moors. The people live and work in peace, and the nobles wear gold and silver. The capital that can maintain these is the advanced military power. In addition, Prince Maz III, who possesses the rank of Brigadier General in the naval headquarters, is included. Make the Kingdom of Maz even more unbeatable in this sea area. You know, this is the first half of the Great Voyage. At the time, in the town of Log in the East China Sea, a strong smog with a large school could suppress the entrance and exit of the entire East China Sea into the Great Route. Having the strength of a general level, even a brigadier general level, is completely a downgrade strike in such a national level war. Watching the Aizen Joro brothers slowly walking from afar. Prince Morse III knew that he had really encountered big trouble this time. We must give it our all. Retreat. Retreat the soldiers on the front line, these two are not something you can handle. In order to reduce losses, Prince Muse III made up his mind to withdraw the army of the Muse Kingdom, which was still fighting on the front line. As for wanting to consume these two brothers based on their numbers first. Just kidding, didn't you see the soldiers around trembling all over? Moreover, the Ma's kingdom, known for its benevolence, does not allow such incidents of cannon fodder consumption to occur. Looking at the Aizen Joro brothers from a distance, no matter how they looked at Prince Mozi III, they all felt that these two were very difficult to deal with. Good guy, slowly feeling the pressure. Retreat. His Highness the Prince orders a retreat. Withdraw. Quickly withdraw. Upon hearing the order from His Highness the Prince, the soldiers on the front line with trembling legs rushed towards the rear, regretting that their parents had not deformed themselves and had lost a few legs. A bit benign, he still carried his companions who were heavily injured and escaped together on no retreat. Famous Aizen Joro brothers. I will be your opponent below. Prince Morse III looked at the trembling soldiers beside him, and had no choice but to grit his teeth. God bless. His Royal Highness pulled out his huge sword from his back and slowly walked forward to welcome the approaching Aizen Joro brothers. If I win this duel, your kingdom of Woka will launch our kingdom of Moors and abandon the plan of invasion. How about that? I actually don't understand why men like you want to help the Woka kingdom commit crimes, why? Loud noise, Kaido lifted his wolf tooth stick and fiercely smashed it at Mozi 3. Too fast, Mozi 3 didn't have time to react, even those who watched from behind didn't see how Kaido ran to Mozi 3. The crowd who thought a big war would happen next was stunned. Kaido surprisingly smashed Prince Mozi 3 and his golden armor into pieces with a single blow, 
and his whole body was smashed to pieces. What's the whole prince chattering about? It's really noisy. Kai Duo spat and said disdainfully. Wang. Has his highness the prince died? Run quickly. This is. A monster. Many Mozi soldiers were stunned and they saw Prince Mozi III being hammered out. What about the agreed strong ones? What about the agreed life and death battle? The hearts of everyone were as hopeless as losing faith. After someone shouted, the crowd reacted and fled backwards. When the tree falls, the monkeys scatter. Chapter 4 New Capabilities You are listening at NovelFull.audio Let's go, Kaido, find the treasure of the kingdom. This is the agreement between Karagar and Woka too. As long as it is a war involving the Aizen Joro brothers, all spoils of war belong to the kingdom of Woka. But the Aizen Joro brothers were able to take away the devil's fruit from the spoils of war. Of course, the prerequisite is that there is a devil's fruit among these spoils of war. The palace was already in chaos, with countless ministers fleeing everywhere. Seeing the eyes in Joro brothers walking towards the entrance of the palace. King Ma's II's heart sank to the bottom. When the news of Prince Morse III's defeat reached the capital, the king knew that he had his own destiny and that his country would perish. Old man, where is the treasure? Kaido walked towards King Ma's II, who was lost on the throne, and asked with a rude expression on his face. For the sake of treasure. A man with your strength would actually do it for the sake of treasure. Come with me, I will offer all my treasures to you, but I beg you not to harm my people, they are innocent. King Ma's too led the Aizen Joro brothers towards the basement of the palace. Drip, energy discovered ahead oh. Have you finally arrived? Devil fruit. This is the key to unlocking the system. Arriving at the treasure trove, countless shimmering treasures. Crowns, scepters, coins, and countless treasures scattered throughout the storage room, piled up into high mountains. At the end of the treasure, a black box appeared so insignificant in front of these shimmering treasures. According to the system prompt, this should be the devil's fruit. Karagar excitedly walked forward and kicked off the lid of the treasure box, which contained four demon fruits. Two animal and two superhuman demon fruits. Although it is unclear what ability it is, basic information can be determined based on the appearance of the demon fruit. The animal type devil fruit is a regular fruit with a circle pattern of devil fruit added. At first glance, the Superman devil fruit is like some crooked melons and cracked dates. The natural type devil fruit is very similar to the animal type but the difference is that the circle pattern of the natural type devil fruit is more aggressive, as if it is about to run out of the devil fruit, for example, let's take oranges. The orange with circular patterns on it is the animal type devil fruit, I can't tell it's an orange anymore, so it must be a superhero demon fruit, the circular pattern of the orange causes it to split in all directions, as if half of the orange has been peeled, which is the natural demon fruit. Looking at the demon fruit in the box. Karagar picked up a Superman demon fruit. Didi, discovered special energy, is it absorbed? Absorb. Karagar silently shouted in his heart. Drip. Absorption completed, system restarted. Didi, the system has restarted and the traversal system has been turned on. Bind host. Aizen Joro Karagar. The system binding was successful, energy was insufficient and ability activation failed. Upon hearing that the system had been turned on, Karagar felt extremely happy in his heart. Starting from today, I am also a man with golden fingers. With the golden finger, coupled with my knowledge of a prophetic timeline in the world of pirates. It's really like a fish in water. Pick up a Superman demon fruit again and silently recite in your heart. Absorb. As I watched the demon fruit disappear from my hand, the sound of the system rang out again. Drip, successfully absorbed, activate function. The enhancement function has failed to activate due to the host's current inability. 
The lottery function is enabled drip, check if the host gains special energy and win a lottery. Due to the host's lack of ability, the current lottery can only draw abilities and cannot draw items. Do I still need to draw a lottery? Shouldn't I choose to upgrade my skill tree or something? Karagar frowned, how could it be different from what he had planned? Do you remember any time travel novels in your past life? They were all about a few shadow level ninja fighters. Or do you want a few captain level death guards? Lottery. Didi, successful lottery draw, congratulations to the host for obtaining a new ability. Predation, level 1, Didi, detected that the host has acquired new abilities, the enhancement function is activated. Friendly reminder, the enhancement function can consume special energy to enhance and upgrade the host's already acquired abilities. Opening a new ability in a lottery requires one point of energy, upgrading one ability requires two points of energy, upgrading the second ability requires four points of energy, and upgrading the third ability requires eight points of energy, etc. Lying trough. Can we still upgrade? How could it be a bit like the rush of a previous life's cultivation novel? Upgrade the crossing robbery. I'm traveling, not cultivating immortals. Karagar discovered that after activating the system, he had an additional ability to view his attribute panel. Seeing this, Karagar silently opened his panel. Host. Aizen Joro Karagar. Ability. Predation, level 1. Killing a target with special energy can obtain special energy within the target's body. Item. Two devil fruits, unknown ability, is it gone? I am Nima, and others have traveled through many amazing times. What strength, speed, and skills are there? What about myself? How many words have sent me away? Nothing, garbage system. After roast about the lower system, Karagal began to study new abilities. Predation, Level 1. Killing a target with special energy can obtain special energy within the target's body. This this means that one does not need to blindly search for the devil fruit. Hunting a devil fruit ability is equivalent to providing the system with one devil fruit, which is very helpful for oneself whether it is opening new abilities or upgrading abilities. Ultimate Developmental Ability this instantly lifted Karagara's mood. Put away the remaining two animal demon fruits and take Kaido out of the treasure room of the Kingdom of Moors. As for the treasure inside, Karagar doesn't even care about it. As early as the time of crossing, Karagar understood the rules of this world. Having power is equivalent to having everything. Karagar plans to stay and study the specific abilities of the animal demon fruit. I don't know if the genes are similar to Kaido now. Karagar now also likes this kind of fist-to-flesh combat style. The natural demon fruit ability in the pirate world is like a wizard, obscene and tedious. The superhuman demon fruit ability is simply flashy, with all kinds of imaginative abilities. Only the animal series is his favorite form of hand-to-hand -hand combat, and Karagar now loves the animal series to death. After making up his mind, Karagara's goal became to fulfill the wish of his previous life, Kato. Build a legion of all animal demon fruit abilities. Launch a war that is even greater than the top war. So these two demon fruits must be kept and studied carefully to determine their specific abilities. If it is an animal species, ancient species, or animal species, or mythical animal species. So either let Kai Duo eat it to increase his own combat power. If it is an animal species or a common species, leave it for future partners. Although I don't like ordinary species, not everyone has a chance to eat the rarity of demon fruits, even animal species. There are still very few capable individuals in this vast sea. Chapter 5 Two Years You are listening at NovelFull.audio Returning to the kingdom of Woka, the familiar wooden houses along the coast gave Karagar a feeling of returning home. Although the wooden house is not large, there are only two rooms, one for oneself and the other for Kido. The endless ocean and golden beaches make it the best place for Karagar and Kido to practice. 
If you're hungry, go down to the sea to catch fish. If you're tired, go back to the cabin to rest and wait for the next war to come. Days pass by day by day. Today is the new year, which makes Karagara's mood very happy. On the beach, giant octopuses and sea kings were grilled, and Kaido happily threw wooden blocks into the fire. Dong 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 A group of Woka soldiers walked neatly from a distance. The leader of the team is really the commander of the Geika army who was responsible for commanding in the previous war. Aizen Joro Karagar. As per my king's order, this is your reward. Speaking, Captain Gaka handed Karagar a wooden box and then left the beach with the people. Here, Gaka didn't want to stay for a second, and the atmosphere with the Aizen Joro brothers was too oppressive. Gaka doesn't want to have any connection with these brothers. I'm afraid that if I say the wrong word, Kaido's wolf tooth stick will fall. After the commander of the Gaika army moves away. Karagar opened the box, revealing two demon fruits. One is a superhero demon fruit, and one is an animal demon fruit. Still the same as before, the specific abilities are still unknown. After all, both myself and Kaido have not read the Devil's Fruit Illustrated. This. This is the secret treasure of the sea. Devil's Fruit. Big Brother, has Woka too fulfilled his promise. A year ago, as the new year approached, Kaido learned that Karagar had exchanged two demon fruits per year for a deal to help the Woka kingdom win the war. Previously, in the treasure trove of the Kingdom of Moors, Kaido was attracted by the abundance of gold and did not see the four demon fruits in the treasure trove. I only saw that in the end, Karagar took away two devil fruits. Nowadays, these two are still in Karagar's room. Kaido also approached and asked Karagar why he struggled so hard to collect demon fruits but didn't eat them in exchange for stronger power. Did this power make you surrender? Kido. Are you the man who surrendered for this power? As my brother, what you want is the highest power of the sea. Karagar replied to Kaido like this. Since then, Kaido has never mentioned anything to Karagar about taking devil's fruit. Although Kaiduo's mind is not very bright, he does not know the gates and paths in the devil's fruit. But Kido knew that Karagar would not harm himself, and he would not inquire again to make Karagar underestimate him. In Karagara's heart, only the mythical creatures can match him and Kato. If he eats any cat or dog's abilities, such as turning into rabbits or ducks, he can't bear to look directly at them. Two years later. The year of the Hyuan calendar is 1478. At the age of 13, Karagar has grown to 6 meters, while at the age of 12, Kido has also grown to 5.3 meters. The two monsters were revered as war weapons by the Kingdom of Woka. Within two years, the Kingdom of Woka launched a frenzy of attacks on neighboring countries, gradually expanding its territory. Two years ago, King Woka II sent two demon fruits. The animal-type demon fruits were kept by Karagar, while the superhuman type was absorbed by the system. Karagar chose to upgrade to plunder, instead of opening up new abilities. Upgraded Predation, Level 2 If a target with special energy is killed by the host, it can become a new energy cluster near the host, rather than being directly absorbed. In other words, after killing the capable person, Karagar can obtain the demon fruit that the capable person consumed during their lifetime. The system can be selectively shared or retained. Within two years, the Aizen Joro brothers followed the army of the Kingdom of Woka in their northern and southern expeditions. In addition to the reward of four animal demon fruits given by King Woka II, Karagar also collected six animal demon fruits and two superhuman demon fruits from treasure rooms in other kingdoms. In the war, Karagar killed three animal-powered individuals. They are cat fruit, common breed, cougar form, horse fruit, common breed, zebra form, as well as dog fruit, common breed, and wolf dog form. In the process of fighting against animal-powered individuals, this feeling of punches and punches made Karagar linger and strengthen his belief in forming the animal pirates. 
the two superhuman demon fruits collected in the treasure room of the kingdom were thrown into the system and two new abilities were extracted. Open Panel Host Aizen Joro Karagar Ninlu. Predation, Level 2 Killed by the host, targets with special energy can become new energy aggregates near the host, rather than being directly absorbed. Space Backpack, Level 1 can store any non-living item of 5 square meters. Omnipotent, level 1. Able to detect and know the origin of any non-living object within a range of 5 meters. Item. 15 Animal Series. Common Demon Fruits The Space Backpack solved the storage problem of Karagar collecting demon fruits. After all, it is impossible for oneself to fight with a bunch of demon fruits at any time. Being seen in this way feels very tacky, much like a nouveau riche. The greatest help of Karagara's omniscient and omnipotent ability is his ability to discern demon fruits. This is very, very, very important for Karagar. There are 15 demon fruits stored in the space backpack, why is one less? That happened a year ago. 1477 in the Hyuan calendar after playing for the Kingdom of Woka for two weeks, Karagar discovered a serious problem. That's because I and Kaido seem out of place in this world. Every time I go to the Kingdom of Woka with Kaido, the king buys supplies, and the people seem to climb up Karagar and Kaido. Even some merchants saw the arrival of Karagar and Kaido and closed their stores directly. This made Karagar and Kido very headache and angry. During a sparring with Kaido, a dilapidated sailboat drifted along the familiar coastline. Karagar and Kido went to inspect the condition of the sailboat, which was in a state of disrepair, with only a few corpses clinging to the edge of the ship. Just as Karagar and Kido were burying these people, a survivor began to cough violently. Surprisingly, there are still survivors. Karagar and Kido allied to rescue this lucky person. Chapter 6 Warwick You are listening at NovelFull.audio The survivor was rescued, and Karagar and Kido also learned about the story of this survivor. The survivor, who appears to be 15 or 16 years old, is named Vandal Warwick. Originally an orphan, after leaving the orphanage, he embarked on an adventure to become a bounty hunter with several companions from the orphanage. Due to their young age, they can only hunt some elderly pirates with extremely low rewards, or take on tasks to protect large caravans. These escort missions often recruit a large number of bounty hunters, and generally do not cause any accidents. Even if encountering pirates, there are powerful bounty hunters at the forefront, which is a good task to catch fish. But this time it's different. I don't know what rare treasures are among the escorted merchant ships during this escort mission. It attracted a huge pirate fleet, and the chambers of commerce and escort teams were annihilated. Only Warwick and a few companions secretly searched for the search sailboat and escaped. Due to the lack of food and water, drifting aimlessly on the sea. Several companions did not survive until they died on the sailboat. Although Warwick likes to brag, his true intentions are not bad. When I woke up and saw the descendants of Karagar and Kido, I was completely scared. Think about it, when you wake up, you find Kido's huge body cage shining on you and ask if you're awake. Are you afraid or not? And the name of the Aizen Joro brothers is very loud in the nearby waters, they are famous monster brothers. Warwick, do you have any plans? Karagar asked Warwick. If Warwick wants to leave here, Karagal will let him go, after all, he is not a bloodthirsty person who will kill everyone he sees. If Warwick is willing to follow him, it would be even better. I will treat Warwick as if he were family, and it happens that Warwick is able to solve the problems that Karagar and Kido are currently facing very well when it comes to purchasing goods. Running Errand Buddy This is Karagar's goal in positioning Warwick. Lord Karagar, I don't know where I can go now. After the deaths of several of my companions, I don't have any ideas or goals at the moment. Maybe I will continue to be a bounty hunter in the future. Warwick thought for a moment and replied. Now Warwick is very confused. 
The life of drifting on the sea is lonely, and no one will listen to me boasting on the sea again in the future. Thinking about the death of his companion, Warwick felt very uncomfortable in his heart. A few days ago, we were still laughing and laughing together. Fandle Warwick. If you want to leave here, I can offer you some financial help. If you can drift here, it can be considered that you have a connection with our brothers. If you still don't know where to go, I don't know if you are willing to give up Fandle's surname, carry eyes and Joro, walk on the sea in the name of eyes and Joro, and help me and Kaido deal with some of the troubles we encounter. After all, forced competition is not sweet, and Karagar doesn't want to force Warwick to help him. After all, if there are any problems in the future, Warwick's resentment will bring big trouble to Karagar. Aizen Joro. Isn't this your and Lord Kido's surname? Lord Karagal, I don't understand. Can I really help you and Lord Kido, weak and weak? Strength knows no strength, everyone has their own role. Warwick, are you willing to become my family? Contribute your strength to Aizen Joro. Lord Karagar, do you need my strength? If that's the case, I'm willing to give all my strength for you. Karagar pursed his lips. What power do you have, kid? I just want you to help me buy a dish of course, you can't tell Warwick these things in person. Why don't you hit people more? I am willing to bear the name of Aizen Joro. Lord Karagal, from today on, my name is Aizen Joro Warwick. I will carry the flag of Aizen Joro and walk on the sea, not to embarrass you and Lord Kido. You're so sensible, this little guy. Karagar was very happy in his heart. I casually took out a demon fruit from my space backpack and handed it to Warwick. Eat it, you're still too weak now. This is the strength you need. From today on, we will be a family. Also, can you stop calling me adult? It sounds strange. Hey how about that? Lord Karagar and Lord Kaido are my life.saving benefactors. I will always remember your kindness to Lord Kaido in my heart. Well it doesn't matter, let's call this little ghost whatever it likes. This. This is the secret treasure of the sea. Devil's fruit. It's really too precious, I can't take it, Lord Karagar. Don't talk nonsense, if you want to eat it, you can eat it. It's just babbling. Kai Duo's temper was so hot that he didn't vent his anger when he saw that Warwick was still making a fuss about the benefits he had given him. This is the devil's fruit, even the most garbage devil's fruit can be photographed on the black market for over 100 million belly. It's really frustrating to not be willing to give him food. Eat. I'll eat now. Seeing Kaido staring, Warwick was extremely scared in his heart. Open your mouth and swallow the demonic fruit in Karagara's hand. Ugh it tastes so bad, like eating dog poop. Hey. It's strange, why do I know what dog poop tastes like? Oh, it doesn't matter. Ugh ugh, don't vomit. Let me eat it all. If you dare to vomit, I'll peel off your skin. Kido continued to scare Warwick. After hearing Kido's threatening words, Warwick covered his mouth and tried to swallow the unpleasant devil fruit, afraid of spitting out a little. All right, Warwick, use your abilities and let me see what abilities you have obtained. Warwick took two steps back, and his original height of 2.2 meters began to expand dramatically, transforming into a wolf. Ah no, it seems like a dog. Why do you want to ask? At this moment, Warwick's head and body were like a wolf, imposing and handsome. But what's going on with this tail swaying up and down? It really looks like a dog. Karagar remembered that this was the ability of a person who had been beaten to death with one elbow before. Dog fruit, common breed, wolf dog form. From then on, in the tavern of the capital of the kingdom of Woka. I often see a man who can brag with everyone for hours even when buying a drink. The problem is that these listeners knew the man was bragging but no one pointed him out. Just kidding, the last person who pointed out a man's misfortune had his body exposed to the sun on a pole outside the tavern for three days and three nights. 
And this man who is bragging is called Eisen Joro Warwick. People on the sea are more willing to call them, the lackeys of the Eisen Joro family. Chapter 7 Leaving You are listening at NovelFull.audio The country being attacked this time is the kingdom of Lafite. This kingdom is rich in fine wine. At that time, more than ten soldiers of the Lafite kingdom army besieged me. If it weren't for the young master, I would have been an invincible demon fruit cultivator, probably assigned to the battlefield of the battle with the Lafite kingdom long ago. Gollum 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 Warwick gulps down the wine from his bowl and tells his adventure story at the Wangdu Tavern in the kingdom of Woka. This is Warwick's favorite thing to do on a regular basis. Really? Brother Warwick, you're so handsome. I didn't expect you to be so strong that one person can fight against more than ten royal armies. A few young brats listen to Warwick's adventure story, their eyes sparkling with admiration. A few little brats, do you also believe what Warwick said? The drinkers in the tavern have long been accustomed to the cowhide king of Warwick. Warwick, when I first came in, I saw the world government's ship sailing into the port of Wangdu. I don't know what's going on in our Woka kingdom this time. That must be a big deal. If it's okay, the world government won't come to our kingdom of Woka. A few little brats are discussing with each other at a glance. The people in the tavern were exchanging information in their hands. If you want to gather information, a tavern is the best choice. Warwick's face changed when he heard it. Carragher wine was previously mentioned to Warwick. Be sure to pay attention to the ships of the world government, and once the world government enters the kingdom of Woka, be sure to notify Karagar as soon as possible. This year is the year 1478 in the Gregorian calendar. King Woka II would betray the Aizen Joro brothers. As a condition of exempting the payment of heavenly gold for several years, the Aizen Joro brothers were given to the world government as seeds for maintaining world peace. This is the memory of Karagar's past life, an important timeline for the world of pirates that Karagar remembers in his heart. Although Warwick did not know why Karagar knew that Woka too had betrayed him and others, he had great faith in Karagar and believed in his words. That's all for today. It's time to go back. Hey brother Warwick, why is it so early today? Well, there are still many important things to do today. Let me share with you the adventure story of Warwick the Sea Warrior next time. Warwick stretched lazily, got up, and walked out of the tavern. After leaving the tavern, Warwick walked into a pitch black alley. Seeing no one around, he eagerly took out the phone worm that Karagar had given Warwick. Bloom 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 bloom, hello, Moses Moses, Warwick. What's going on? Karagar's voice came from the telephone worm. Lord Karagar, the world government's ship has entered the port of the kingdom of Woka. As you have instructed, once you discover that the world government has entered the kingdom of Woka, you will be notified as soon as possible. Got it, Warwick, you did a great job. Come back quickly, we're leaving the kingdom of Woka. Karagal's face changed when he heard Warwick's phone call on the coast. Has this day arrived yet? Now is not the time for conflict with the world government. Due to his arrival, he often practiced with Kaido, which made his strength far exceed that of Kaido in previous anime at his current age. Not to mention having a stronger version of oneself here than Kaido. If we kill an important member of the world government, it would be troublesome. It's not that Karagar is afraid of the world government, mainly because the current timeline is still too early. The plot has not yet begun, and the first affection is the Battle of the Valley of the Gods, it hasn't arrived yet, in case it kills an important person and leads to the butterfly effect. The advantage of one's own prophetic grasp of the pirate timeline will be completely eliminated. At present, the few abilities provided by the system are not helpful in terms of combat effectiveness, and everything depends on oneself. We cannot rely too much on the system. Warwick collected the telephone worm in the alley, transformed into a beast form, transformed into a wolf dog, and ran towards the coastline where Karagar was located. On this side of the coastline, Kaido is carrying a huge sailboat towards the seaside. 
This is the sailboat that Warwick fled from a year ago, and it has been repaired and improved a lot by Warwick. Hurry up, Warwick, we should go now. We won't come back, will we? Lord Caragall. Although Warwick was mentally prepared, he couldn't help but ask. The life in the tavern made Warwick somewhat reluctant. There's nothing we can do, Warwick. King Woka too has betrayed us. It's not yet time for conflict with them. Don't be petty, Warwick. Men should keep their chests up. Let's go. The Seven Rivers Capital Since you have the advantage of past life memories, you need to fully utilize your strengths. The Capital of Seven Rivers The world's shipbuilding capital In the world of pirates, over 70% of ships are built by the Seven Waters Capital. The warships of the world government and navy, the pirate ships of countless great pirates, and so on all come from the Seven Rivers capital. Karagar had planned for the next step when he knew that one day he would leave the kingdom of Woka. What is currently available in the Seven Waters capital? In addition to world.class shipbuilding capabilities. The timeline for the legendary shipbuilding Master Tom is uncertain whether it is in the Seven Waters capital or on the island of Fishman. Not to mention the two disciples of Master Tom. The president of Iceberg and Frank from the shipyard. The design drawings of the ancient weapon Hades King are even more absurd. The only thing that can be certain about the Seven Waters capital is having many, many boats. And it is very close to the Isle of Justice, which is the island that never sleeps. And what is on Justice Island? CP9 is probably not yet born. However, if Karagar remembers correctly, there is a legend about giants in his past life memories legend has it that a long time ago, several legendary giants emerged from the island of Elbaf ruled by giants. Led by the giants Dongli and Bloki, the giant pirates regiment resounded throughout the sea was formed in 1422 according to the Haiyuan calendar because of a joke, who are the leaders Dongli and Bloki more powerful. This caused a huge conflict between Dongli and Blocky. No one is convinced. In order to prove themselves to be the strongest giant, the leaders of the giant pirates, Dongli and Blocky, engaged in decades-long battles on the Great Root Little Garden Island. Until Luffy reached the Little Garden, in his previous anime, there was no winner. The giant pirates disbanded after losing two leaders. Giants wander around. Chapter 8. Landing. Justice Island. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. In order to regain the dignity of the giants, former members of the giant pirates, Oimo and Casey, continued to walk on the sea in search of their young leaders, Dongli and Blocky, and searched everywhere for news about their leaders. After the world government learned of the news, they falsely claimed that Dongli and Blocky had already been captured by the navy and were being held in the large prison of, in Pelton, which is still being held and no one can escape. As long as Oimo and Casey guard the gates of Justice Island for the world government for 100 years. As a transaction, the world government released Dongli and Blocky. Karagar, who knows the plot, said that the, little garden, is too far from its current location, close to the entrance of the Great Route. So Karagar decided to go to the Seven Water Capital and transfer from the Seven Water Capital to Judiciary Island. Go to Justice Island and find Oimo and Casey. Use the news from Dongli and Blocky as a condition to exchange for what Karagar wants. Legend has it that the lifespan of the giant race can reach up to 300 years, and any adult giant race, whether male or female, is a heavenly warrior. The owner is as powerful as an ordinary lieutenant general in the navy headquarters. An outstanding warrior of the giant clan, who is able to learn the ancestral battle technique of the giant clan, the Spear of Albaf. Dominating the country. Giant warriors are born with an incredibly large body and innate divine power. But the disadvantage is also very obvious, which is the inability to cultivate the dominance of armed colors and visible colors. Encountering powerful enemies, the battle of giant warriors who cannot use their dominance will be extremely difficult. In order to get rid of this situation, 
the ancestors of the giant tribe developed an invincible combat technique that belonged only to the giant tribe. That is the Albaf Spear. Overlord. Legend has it that a hegemonic country can break mountains and seas. Apart from those with natural abilities who can rely on fluid abilities to forcibly avoid the sharpness of a hegemonic country, whether they are animal or superhuman, or those who specialize in physical arts. As long as one is in a hegemonic country, no one can live. The Spear of Elbaf Dominating the country, a technique that the giants are proud of for destroying their country. In her past life memories, Charlotte Lingling, the Four Emperors, followed her parents to the island of giants called Albath at a young age. I peeked at the giant warrior's cultivation. Based on my own understanding, I created a weakened version of Albath gun. Mighty country, while stealing half of my Albath gun. Mighty country. Even in the weakened version of the hegemonic country, the protagonist Luffy, who had been practicing for two years, was completely defeated by Charlotte Lingling's mighty country with a full blow after opening the fourth gear. It is evident that it is terrifying. The Spear of Albaf. Overlord. This is Karagara's goal. The small boat was sailing on the sea, and Karagar struggled to recall memories of his past life. Kaido leisurely drank wine. Warwick is constantly cooking and eating in the kitchen. Since Warwick joined, everything has now been entrusted to him to do. This makes Kaido very happy. Originally, these trivial matters were all entrusted to Kaido. As long as you complain a few words, you won't miss Karagar's fierce beating. Renowned as helping him cultivate his ability to resist attacks. I didn't encounter any pirates along the way. Perhaps the current timeline has not yet reached the age of pirates, and the number of pirates is far less than in previous anime. After arriving at the Seven Waters capital, Warwick paid the parking fee and then entered the business district of the Seven Waters capital to purchase the eternal pointer of Judicial Island. This is what Karagar has confessed. Karagar and Kido did not disembark and waited for Warwick in the cabin. When Warwick returned, he brought back two eternal pointers, one of which was the eternal pointer of Justice Island. It is Karagara's goal to go to Justice Island to find Oimo and Casey to learn the Spear of Albaf. Dominance. But if Oimo and Cassie won't dominate the country, then Karagar will have to make plans again. This second eternal pointer is the eternal pointer to the Whiskey Peak. Whiskey Peak is located at the entrance of the Great Voyage. To reach Whiskey Peak, one must pass through the Little Garden Island where former leaders of the Giant Pirates, Dongli and Blocky, are located. Due to the lack of an eternal pointer that directly locates the Little Garden, Karagar can only settle for the second best and prepare the eternal pointer for the Whiskey Peak. As an alternative. After Warwick returned, Karagar, who was waiting in the cabin, immediately announced that he had set sail. Justice Island is within reach, and Karagar is eager to witness the prowess of the giants in their destruction of the country. Lord Karagar, Justice Island has arrived. Not long after, Warwick's voice came from the deck outside. Karagar's thoughts of recalling past life memories were interrupted. Well, it doesn't matter. Have you finally arrived? Justice Island is a legendary, never-dot-ending island. As the ship sailed into the port of Justice Island, a group of navies surrounded it. The naval squadron leader, on the other hand, shouted with a loudspeaker bug. The ship ahead, pull over. Everyone on board. Put down your weapons. Report your identity. Accept naval inspection. Because there are no patterns on the sail. The navies are also uncertain about their identities, and if they are senior officials of the world government, they will inevitably be wearing small shoes if they offend them. Let's first inquire and follow the proper procedures. The sailboat doesn't look too big, and it's not equipped with heavy weapons such as cannons. The navy doesn't believe that a few people can attack Justice Island without weapons. Thief ha ha ha, is this Justice Island? I saw two shadows jumping into the sky from the ship. 
the sailboat sank downwards under the action of the reaction force. Two black shadows appeared on the ground. Dong! Two figures descended from the sky. Two enormous little giants appeared in front of the navy. Two people have huge bull horns on their heads, long hair on their backs, one holding a huge broadsword, and the other carrying a huge wolf-toothed stick on their shoulders. The official visitors are Karagar and Kido. When he was calm, Warwick quickly ran off the boat. Lord Karagar. Lord Kido. Why is it different from the plan? Are we going to attack Justice Island? Well, it doesn't matter, Warwick. The original plan that Karagar told Warwick was to sneak into Justice Island and wait for an opportunity to find the giant's Oimon Casey. What about the agreed infiltration? Where is the agreed opportunity? Just now, Karagal and Kai couldn't help but jump out and appear in front of the Navy. I have no choice but to work hard. Warwick is now extremely nervous. I have never seen so many navies before. Even if he followed Karagar and Kaido in invading other kingdoms, he had never been so nervous before. This is the navy, different from those cats and dogs. Chapter 9 Trading You are listening at NovelFull.audio A normal adult has only 5 points of Taoist power, while a trained naval soldier has reached 10 points of Taoist power. This is not a 5 plus 5 math problem there is no problem for a naval soldier to defeat four or five normal adults. Pirates. Three people just want to attack Justice Island. Upon hearing Warwick's words, the Navy immediately showed a fighting posture, nervously and seriously staring at the Karagar group. Although surprised by the massive bodies of Karagar and Kido. But the excellent Navy soldiers immediately straightened their mentality. Line up. Shoot. Soon, a naval lieutenant colonel organized an attack. Rows of guns were neatly aimed at the three Karagar people. Big brother, you go first. I'm not interested in any kind of hegemonic country. You go and return quickly, while Warwick and I guard the ship. Kaido has no interest in the giant race's unique skills. Previously, Karagar and Kido talked about the giant clan, but the Elbaf spear. Overlord must be slashed with a sharp blade. What Kaido likes is the feeling of smashing people with a wolf-toothed stick. So Kaido gave up the opportunity to learn the secrets of the giant clan. Bang 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 rows of black smoke emanated from the muzzle, and bullets shot out from the muzzle. Kido jumped forward and blocked a row of bullets with his body. The sound of metal collision came from Kai Duo's body. Kai Duo raised his wolf tooth stick and threw it at the navy. Is that all the navy has? If that's the case, then go to hell. Thunder. Gossip. Kaido's full force strike instantly shattered a row of navy into a mist of blood, and his entire body was shattered. Lord Kaido is still so terrifying. I can't paddle anymore. Transform. Warwick used his fruit ability and became a werewolf. This is exactly Warwick's humanoid form. Preserving the ferocity of animal beasts while also possessing the agility and clarity of the owner. This is also Warwick's strongest form. Soon, Warwick's body began to swell and a werewolf appeared in front of everyone. Warwick rushed towards the navy crowd, like a wolf entering a flock of sheep. Karagar quickly arrived at the Justice Gate of Justice Island. The one guarding here is the target for this time. Two giant warriors, Amo and Kashi. Get out of here. Pirate, this is not where you should come. As early as the sailboat sailed into the port, the giants noticed the movement there. Watching the navy engaged in battle with Kaido. The giants know that they have come to live. Justice cannot be trampled upon. This is exactly the meaning of our existence here. Oimo and Casey, 
dressed in navy cloaks, raised their weapons and attacked Karagar. Wait. I know the news about Dongli and Blocky. What? Damn pirate, who told you that? You don't need to tell us the news about the leaders of Dongli and Blocky. That's exactly why we guard this place. That's right, as long as we keep this place safe for 100 years, we will meet the leaders of Dongli and Blocky. Karagar raised his broadsword to block the attacks of the two giants, watching two idiots being sold by the world government and counting money for others, speechless to the extreme. Stop it. You have been deceived by the world government. Dongli and Blocky were not caught by the navy and kept in Impelton. I know their whereabouts. What? How dare the world government deceive us? Aren't they afraid of retaliation from our giant race? Wait, how did you know about our transactions with the world government? Oimo and Cassie stopped their attacks. Go forward and inquire. I can't say that. Make a deal, give me what I need, and I'll tell you about the positions of Dongli and Brocky. Fair trade, isn't it? Sure, pirate, state your conditions. If the conditions are acceptable, Oimo and Cassie are very willing to trade with Karagar. After all, former leaders of the giant pirates, Dongli and Blocky, were very important to them. This is also the only way they can currently think of to revive the giant pirates. I want the Spear of Elbaf. The cultivation method of dominating the country. What? The Elbaf Spear. Where did you hear that news? The Elbaf Spear is indeed a secret skill of our giant race. As a condition of exchange, I would love to make this deal with you. But the problem is that we don't even know the Elbaf Spear. That's right, the secret skill of the Elbaf Spear can only be learned by outstanding giant warriors. We haven't cultivated it to the point where we can learn the Elbaf Spear yet. Moreover, even if we give you the cultivation method, you won't be able to learn it. The Elbaf Spear requires the physical strength of the giant race to be used, otherwise it will suffer severe backlash. Suddenly, the two giants looked at Karagar. Hey, don't even say that Karagar really looks like a little giant. Moreover, the explosive muscles and the double horns on the top of the head look even more powerful than ordinary giants. Can you learn to ignore it, can't you? Yes, I want to exchange the news from Domli and Blocky for Albaf's eternal pointer. Karagar has decided that if Oimo and Casey, who guard the Gate of Justice, don't know the gun of Elbaf, they will turn to the Little Garden to find Dongli and Blocky. Try to get in touch and see if you can learn the gun of Elbaf. If you don't even know Dongli and Blocky, then go to Elbaf, where you will definitely learn about the hegemonic country. After the closure of the country, the giants gathered eternal pointers on the sea to reach Elbaf which led to the fact that those who wanted to go to Elbaf could only rely on the giants. There are very few Elbaf eternal pointers circulating outside. Sure, we can agree to your condition. In exchange, you need to provide us with information about the leaders of Dongli and Bloki. Additionally, we also have an additional condition. That is, you can obtain an eternal pointer to Elbaf, but you must ensure that you do not harm anyone or anything on Elbaf and you cannot launch a war against Elbaf. The two giants discussed and decided to make this deal with Karagar. After all, the news from the leaders of Dongli and Bloki is too important for them. Moreover, there are many powerful giant warriors on top of Elbaf, who will protect him well. It is estimated that this man only wants the eternal pointer of Elbaf to learn the famous skill of the giant clan, Elbaf Spear. Overlord the country. Deal. Karagara's heart suddenly blossomed with joy. The first step of the plan has finally been completed, and now we are heading to the little garden to find Dongli and Blocky. Chapter 10 Rewards You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Karagar didn't expect to get what he wanted so smoothly. Although it's a pity that the two guarding giants don't know how to use the Albaf spear, there's nothing they can do about it. It was already as expected. Just thinking about it, if Amo and Casey knew the Albaf gun, 
they would never have been able to enter the Justice Island. Teach a person directly with a albaf spear in front of them. Returning to the port, Kaido was sitting on the ground drinking a small drink. Warwick sat on a small mountain piled up by the navy, panting heavily. It's time to go. After we make a scene here, the navy headquarters will definitely support us. It's not easy to bully like these minions. Karagar is telling the truth that even newcomers like Luffy who have just set out to sea can break through Judicial Island, and the combat power to protect Judicial Island is simply a bunch of garbage. And the Navy Headquarters is different. Do you want Luffy to try attacking the Navy Headquarters? The white-bearded leader of the Four Emperors had to kneel down when he went to the Navy Headquarters. Shortly after Karagar's departure, a warship sailed into the port of Justice Island. Line up. Welcome General Steelbone. Where is the enemy? Who sent a distress signal to our headquarters? The newcomer is the man named Steelbone, in the Navy, who is the highest combat power among the three major generals of the Navy headquarters. This. Report to the general, the enemy drove away with a single blow. For some reason, the enemy turned away after arriving at the Judicial Island and defeating us, without taking anything with them. Is it a deterrent or something else? Let's go. Return. Let the marshal and the old man think about these things. Kong believes that some newly debuted pirates are trying to expand their fame by attacking Justice Island. After all, having a good reputation makes it easier to sail on the sea. In the open sea, besides having ships and strength, the navy's capital in suppressing the sea is an unparalleled advantage in numbers. Do you dare to attack the navy? In less than half a day, there will be a naval fleet ten times stronger than you besieging you, which is the navy's means of suppressing the sea. Anyone who dares to challenge the navy's position at sea will be quickly suppressed by the navy using this sea of people tactic. Perhaps the number of pirates in this world is much higher than that of the navy, but guns shoot birds in the head. Whoever attacks the navy first, the navy will attack whoever. No one wants to do this early bird first. The next day, the news bird threw the latest news and a bounty to the world. Karagar and others driving towards the little garden have also received the latest news from the news bird. News Headlines in the second half of the Great Route, the Rocks Pirates defeated the other pirate groups and became the world's leading pirate group on the Great Route. Captain Locks continued to vigorously recruit personnel, but due to the large number of people, he decided to develop a team system for decentralized management. This is also the first pirate group on the sea to implement a team system. Captain Locks manages the captain of the team, while the captain manages the crew. The Rocks Pirates are still expanding. At present, it has already demonstrated its dominant position in the second half of the Great Voyage. Perhaps in the future, it can no longer be called the Rocks Pirates, but rather the Rocks Pirates Fleet. The latest bounty order is as follows. Captain of the Locks Pirates. John. Bounty of 632 million Belials. His weapon is two swords, and he is a top swordsman skilled in the flow of two swords, demonstrating the strength of a great swordsman. Has no fruit ability, enjoys collecting treasures, and has extremely strong domineering abilities. Extremely dangerous, regardless of life or death. Captain of the second team of the Locks Pirates. Wang Ji. A bounty of 618 million Belize is offered. Its weapon is a double dot edged giant sword with extremely strong armed aura. Has no fruit ability, enjoys training subordinates like an army. The second team is also the most cooperative team, understanding various tactics. Extremely dangerous, regardless of life or death. Captain of the Rocks Pirates third team. Silver Axe. A bounty of 596 million Belials is offered. He is wrapped in silver armor all over his body, and his weapons are a silver shield on his left hand and a silver two-handed axe on his right hand. No fruit ability, divine power from heaven, can use a two-handed axe with one hand. 
Although he is the weakest captain of the Rocks Pirates, don't underestimate him. Silver Axe's favorite is recruiting subordinates. The third team is also the team with the largest number of people. Extremely dangerous, regardless of life or death. These are intelligence pieces written about several Captain Locks of the Roxfin team, without introducing Captain Locks. Mainly written for bounty hunters, the Navy also hopes to have powerful bounty hunters to challenge the Rocks pirates. Even if they can't kill, they can still cause some trouble for the Rocks pirates. Although these bounty hunters are not under the jurisdiction of the Navy, they also help the Navy maintain peace in the sea together. The Navy does not want these people to sacrifice their own strength without any intelligence. At the bottom of the newspaper, the bounty order from Karagar and others is also prominently listed. The thug Aizen Joro Karagar offered a reward of 90 million belly. An extremely evil person with unknown abilities, regardless of life or death. The villain Aizen Joro Kato offered a reward of 70 million belly. No fruit ability. With a body full of divine power and super strong physical defense, he enjoys smashing people to death with a wolf-toothed stick. An extremely evil person, regardless of life or death. Evil dog, Aizen Joro Warwick. A bounty of 25 million Belize is offered. Animal series, common species, and wolf dog with morphological ability. Loves to bite the enemy's neck with teeth and extract their heart with wolf claws. An extremely evil person, regardless of life or death. The newspaper did not mention when three people were offered a reward. Judiciary Island and the Seven Waters capital are very close to the Kingdom of Woka, and some people should have recognized Karagar and others. Why is Karagar, who hasn't made a move, even higher than Kido's bounty? This is not the beginning of the plot, after the beginning of the plot, inflation. At that time, the Navy encouraged people to become bounty hunters and hunted more pirates as a means of suppressing that era of great pirates. The bounty is often given very high. The current bounty is average, and if placed after the start of the plot, it can at least triple. Leaving Justice Island, Karagar and his group drove towards the Little Garden. Having obtained the eternal pointer of Albaf, Karagar will one day go to the Island of Giants to see. But not now, Albaf is still too far away from Karagar and others in the latter half of the Great Route. Mogu Town is located in the center of the first half of the Great Route. A gathering place for pirates. Countless pirates must pass through places as long as they sail on Great Routes. It is also the best material supply point. The sailboats of Karagar and his group are docked at the port of Mogu Town. A group of people carrying big knives will soon approach. 500,000 Bailey. We have secured your ship, this is the territory of the Blood Hand Pirates. 